Yeah, so let's get started. My name is Mike. I'm, I'm one of the co-founders of Hummingbot. I'm going to explain what Gateway is. Um, then we're going to uh, install and set it up, try to get AMMARP strategy going between um, a DEX and a SEX. And then finally, uh, I'll talk about the roadmap for, for Gateway and all the, um, and, and the bounties that we are planning to kind of uh, create that allows community devs to earn tokens and sh hopefully should produce you know, more features for the community to use as, as well. So, okay, so let's get into it. Um, first, let me explain kind of like where Gateway sits within the Hummingbot uh, ecosystem. Because, you know, the Hummingbot has actually expanded quite a lot in the last few years. And, um, and so the reason is because when we first started, uh, it, was, it was really just a very simple market-making bot. Uh, it was a tool that you could just download uh, and run really just market-making strategies um, on centralized exchanges. And it was really a single purpose tool uh, really for just liquidity mining. Fast forward four years and our ecosystem has really expanded uh, dramatically. Hummingbot is now five different open source repositories. And, and the reason is because it's more of a general purpose tool. Uh, we started adding directional strategies um, and, and, and now we also added dashboard uh, is kind of like the, the, the new uh, thing we're working on. Um, so b basically the, the idea is that, you know, in the future, people can kind of like uh, use Docker to deploy um, you know, a, a basically any type of configuration from very simple to more complex. Um, and they can basically use a dashboard as like the, the entry point uh, into a system where they can control something graphically and then launch bots. Um, and, and these bots may or may not trade on DEXs, but if they do, they would use the gateway middleware uh, in order to kind of connect and trade on DEXs. So, so as you can see, gateway is an important part of Hummingbot because it really kind of like allows Hummingbot to um, you know, trade on DEXs while also giving DEXs you know, an ability to add their own connectors. However, it's only one piece of Hummingbot and the role of the foundation, um, you know, we're here to um, kind of like be oversee and promote the overall ecosystem. Uh, that's why um, the approach we're taking now is much more based around community developer bounties as opposed to trying to do a lot of engineering ourselves. Uh, because uh, it's simply a better way to scale our limited resources. In terms of the DEX connectors and Hummingbot, there's really two types. Uh, we do encourage uh, exchanges where there's a Python SDK to build connectors directly into the Hummingbot client. And, and that's because some of these exchanges like DYDX, they, they really kind of like really optimize to serve market makers and quant trading firms already. Uh, so you know, those firms are, you know, Python or in C++ native. And so they've kind of designed their SEK very similar to that of a centralized exchange uh, where it, it is accepts a similar types of credentials in terms of API keys and secrets and exposes similar endpoints uh, in terms of, you know, like the, the Python bindings, uh, the WebSocket bindings that a normal centralized exchange has. So for that class of exchanges, uh, we actually recommend just building a connector directly into the client. However, uh, a lot of exchanges have a different model. So all the AMMs are kind of very different from order book exchanges. And um, a lot of them don't have a Python SDK, their Python or their JavaScript or TypeScript only, um, you know, or they have no SDK at all, in which case you have to kind of you know, interact directly with a smart contract. So for, for those types of exchanges, um, that's kind of why we built Gateway. Um, you know, it's really a translation layer uh, between kind of like these, you know, very, uh, you know, decentralized exchanges have like a different model uh, versus kind of like the, the Python, um, you know, based code base that is really optimized for centralized order book exchanges that is the rest of Hummingbot. To summarize, what Gateway really is, it's, it's really middleware for DEXs. Uh, it's not needed for DEXs with Python SDKs, but it, it is needed for DEXs that don't have them. Um, it supports both EVM as well as non-EVM chains. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we, we obviously optimize for EVM chains like Ethereum, uh, Binance Smart Chain, Polygon, and Avalanche. Uh, but we have, at, the community's added connectors to NIR, um, XEC, 
uh, Algorand, and others. We have five different kind of standards we try to support uh, with varying degrees of you know, kind of complexity. The AMM is kind of the Uniswap V2 style. Uh, AMM range is a v V3 style. Um, and then we also start to add uh, newer standards for uh, kind of perpetual AMMs. And then also we started introducing order book DEX, DEX standards for spot and perp recently as well. One thing to note, and you'll see in, from the installation setup later on, is that uh, Gateway is not a plug and play tool. And that's because trading on DEXs is just very different from trading on exchanges. Um, you know, when you submit a transaction, it's not final until the blockchain says it is, uh, which might be one second, it might be 12 seconds. Uh, it really depends on the exchange. You also have to take into account something called gas, which is basically the transaction costs incurred uh, for getting a transaction confirmed on the blockchain. You know, those gas settings, depending on the chain, can differ, uh, can be very volatile. And if you don't, you know, get it correct, um, you may end up having to cancel a transaction uh, you know, afterwards, which it's its own kind of you know bottleneck of, of weeds. So overall, I would say there's a lot of complexity to trading on DEXs. It's kind of where the 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 market is headed toward in terms of like the the, the cutting edge, you know, what's going on in crypto. However, um, I, I would I would definitely try to make sure you understand you know trading on central exchanges first, uh, and and before you start building DEX trading bots. Finally, uh, I, I do want to point out, I think that because of the surface area of the decentralized exchange landscape and just the, the number of exchanges and networks out there, uh, it's really impossible for us to support the entire market ourselves. And so Gateway kind of has to be a community governed code base because there are uh, important trade-offs in supporting multiple chains and DEXs. Uh, for example, even now, Gateway is already a, uh, I think a five gigabyte Docker image. The reason is because we're importing SDKs from different blockchains uh, and DEXs that are needed. And a lot of them have like lots of different JavaScript dependencies. Um, the, the increase in dependencies is a, um, a potential security vector for attack. Uh, so, you know, the decision whether to add a, a new exchange or support a new chain, uh, I think is not one that the community should take lightly. Um, in addition, as we're kind of increasing the number of DEXs we're trying to support, um, you know, there's really a need for standardization. Uh, you know, the, the simpler standard is, uh, the, the easier it is to add more types. However, uh, you know, unless if we're adding more different DEXs or different features, then they may or may not have to be accounted for. So um, there's a lot of decisions here, and that's why uh, we introduced this governance model where users can vote for which DEXs um, should be supported, uh, which DEXs should be prioritized um, every quarter. Um, you know, and, and I think that vote's important in helping us from a foundation perspective, uh, not only allocate our time and bandwidth uh, and decide how, you know, which bounties we should create, but, but I think it also improves experience for everyone using the code base um, to prevent kind of like, you know, because if Gateway is like a, becomes like a 20 gigabyte uh, Docker image uh, in a few years because we're trying to support all these different blockchains, then, um, then is that really good for everyone? You know, so th those are the kind of the questions that we want people to think about when they're voting uh, every quarter for which exchanges we should support. Let's move on to the next phase of the presentation, which is more about actually installing and setting up. So, so here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna use the deploy examples repo, uh, and I'm gonna show you how to set up using Docker Compose, uh, Hummingbot, and Gateway, and this is gonna be much easier. We have all the instructions in this deploy examples GitHub repository here. We have all the, all the instructions here in the readme. Uh, everything here really relies on a tool called Docker Compose, which allows you to pull various Docker images and then kind of launch them uh, in a single deployment. So the first step is to get this Docker Compose tool um, so th there's instructions in, in here, uh, in, in the Docker page, uh, but I've already have Docker Compose. So, and you can see this, if you've got to run, you can Docker Compose, you should have it available on your command line. So, uh, we're going to install this Hubbingbot gateway compose example. Uh, this is the one that, uh, you know, basically just, uh, launches a single Hubbingbot instance and it's linked to a gateway instance so that it can trade on, on DEXs. 
first, uh, let's clone the repository to our machine. And so we're going to do this. I already cloned it, so I'm not going to clone it again. But uh, if you have cloned it already, just go into the, the repository like this. Do is I'm going to open up a code editor um, and show you what, what files are in. This is the compose YAML file that determ that basically tells uh, Docker, you know, what images to pull and how to configure everything together. This is all the code that you really need because Docker is going to take this code uh, and then it'll know it to, pull, to, to get the Hummingbot image, it'll get this gateway image tag, it'll kind of expose the ports and it'll kind of link everything together. And that, and that makes the setup process a lot easier. And that's kind of, that's kind of why we use uh, Docker Compose. So now that we've done this, we, we really just need to go and follow the instructions here. The next step is really just to run this command docker compose up d. Uh, so let me go into the repository first. All right, sorry, let me go into the folder, I mean. Uh, so now I'm in the folder. Um, and then if you just run docker compose up d, that uh, will basically pull the images from, um, from the docker repository. Uh, and it'll create these two containers on your system. We recommend running this locally first before you run this in the cloud. Um, there's actually gonna be a, a really easy way that you can basically set everything up locally and then just push everything to a cloud server in one step. And so the next step is to, um, is to basically set some permissions and really initialize uh, what's going on here. So one thing to note is that if you look at your code editor, you have two kind of like folders created, one called gateway files and one called Hummingbot files. Uh, and you have some subfolders in these two folders. So these folders are mapped to folders in your Docker images. You know, that's why when you, when you kind of like add your configurations, when you add your scripts, uh, your logs for your, your, your bots, they'll all show up here. So we need to do some initialization in order to, um, get the right permissions. So first let's uh, set the right permissions for those two folders and make sure we can access them. Uh, the next step is to populate the home scripts folder uh, with example scripts. So this will basically pull some sample scripts uh, from the image and it'll store them in your local copy of the scripts folder. Uh, this will give you a few sample scripts to start with. Um, and then we're also going to populate the, the gateway list folder with the, um, the, the gateway token lists. This is a, a, a new feature we just recently um, added because one of the things that people uh, told us they needed to do was to edit and add the tokens to their lists. So now, um, now these lists are now, they allow them to live in the conf directory in your gateway files folder, which should allow users to add and edit uh, those tokens more easily. Um, so now, now that we can do this, now we, we now the next step is just attaching, attach Hummingbot because uh, you've already started your containers and now you can attach them to to run them. So uh, this this is the first time essentially that you're launching Hummingbot. So uh, it'll ask for your password. Um, I just don't want to just put an A here, uh, just to. Um, you know, uh, for demo purposes, but we do encourage you to set a strong password uh, when you're, you know, running it uh, for real. Okay, so the by default, uh, Hummingbot is not linked to Gateway. Uh, you kind of have to uh, basically link it, link it uh, afterwards. So that's why the first thing you should do is to run this Gateway generate search command. Um, and then you can use the same passphrase as the one that uh, you use for Hummingbot or a different one. Um, I just use the same one here, which is also A. And so you'll see a message that says gateway SSL certificates are created in the slash home slash home slash Hummingbot search. So the, this folder is, 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 this is a location in the Docker image because um, it's native to the image, but this, this location is bound to the search folder. Uh, in your Hummingbot files folder. So now, that, now after you've done, you, you've done this, uh, you can just type exit and leave the client. So now that you're back in terminal, um, you should actually take the uh, Compose network down. Uh, and that's because we're gonna make some changes to the YAML file. And now we're gonna go back to this Compose file 
and we can now uh, edit out, we'll basically set the, in, the password um, that we use to define Hummingbot as environment variable. And this will allow us to skip entering the password uh, when we actually launch the client next time. The, the next thing we'll do is we'll also um, enter in this gateway passphrase. This is a passphrase that we use to uh, you know, create the certificates when we generated them earlier for, for gateway. So I also use the same pass, uh, password there. Then the next step is simply to relaunch the network again, Docker compose up dash D. And this will basically relaunch the compose network and will apply the, the new passphrase uh, and the password settings earlier. So now if you do Docker attach Hummingbot, uh, we should see that uh, Docker is already online, or Hummingbot uh, is launched. And, and yes, we can see the gateway is already online here. Uh, so th this should mean the gateway is already connected to Hummingbot. Uh, and we can test this by running the gateway test connection command. One thing to note is we should also open up a separate uh, terminal window and also attach the gateway instance. Uh, this will allow us to see what's, what's happening with the node and any responses that uh, it's gonna give will show up uh, over here. So now we're, we're kind of finished with this installation process, uh, but uh, th this is probably just step one. Now we should actually go and configure uh, the connection gateway as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's gateway is not quite plug and play yet. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to we're going to connect a wallet, and, and then we're going to configure the um, the network chain settings on that wallet, uh, as well as uh, the node itself. So um, the the one thing to note is that you can always type the gateway uh, dash h command in order to get help uh, and see what commands are available over here on, on the gateway side. I'll actually increase the size of the screen a bit more. Um, you can also use control T to maybe kind of like the, to remove the, the, um, the, the basically the, the log pane if you want and see uh, the text a bit more clearly. So uh, we're gonna connect a, um, connect a dex. So use, you should use a connect command. And uh, this basically gives you the list of exchanges that are available uh, to connect to. These are all the dexes supported by gateway. Uh, and so um, I'll just use Uniswap since that's probably the most popular uh, DEX out there. So uh, th th this asks you what chains you want Uniswap to connect to, Ethereum or Polygon. These are the chains it supports right now. So I'll use Ethereum. Um, and, and then after you, you pick the blockchain, you also have to pick the network. Uh, so um, on Ethereum, you know, um, so Ethereum mainnet is the, the, the main one. It's also the most expensive. So we actually find that most people are running bots on uh, on Arbitrum, Optimism, or 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 Polygon, uh, typically on Uniswap. So um, I'm gonna actually gonna use Arbitrum uh, because uh, I have a wallet there. Um, and uh, this question, which we'll get to later on, is whether you want to use the default node URL, um, which is quite important because this is really um, your your entry point to the blockchain, how you're gonna send all the transactions, and so which node you use, whether it's a public one like Anchor or maybe, maybe something like Infura or, or Alchemy actually matters quite a lot. But right now, let's just use the default node provider. And then finally, oh, asking for my, um, uh, my key here. So now after I enter the private key, it says the, the Uniswap connector is now uses this wallet. This is the public address on Ethereum Arbitrum 1. So this means that when I run a, a strategy on, on, on Uniswap on, on Arbitrum, on Arbitrum uh, then it's going to use that wallet by default. So uh, to check this, we can see the balance command. We, we, can we can actually check our ETH balance here. We've actually successfully added a wallet. We should also try to configure the actual connection um, to, to the actual chain itself. So you can use the gateway config command for this. This will basically show you all the, um, the, 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 the configuration saved um, in, um, in these configuration files. So there are configuration files for each chain, as well as for each um, each uh, each each dex. So um, let's actually look at the Ethereum configuration first and understand what you're setting here. For Ethereum, you should not change chain ID because that's the network identifier, but you can change the node URL 
you can change the token list type, whether it's file or URL, the token list source. This is where it kind of maps the addresses um, on the blockchain to actual token symbols. Uh, you can also change the, the gas price refresh interval, native currency, and most importantly, uh, you can change the gas limit transaction and manual gas price. We've kind of modeled everything and really optimized everything for Ethereum. However, if you're trading on Polygon or um, Avalanche or Binance Smart Chain, make sure you know what the right gas settings are um, for this particular chain. Because if you want to change, let's say, let's say I want to change the, 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 the manual gas price for Ethereum, uh, you can just basically do like this, where you say config uh, Ethereum. I make that, let's say 35 instead of 30. Uh, and, and so it's an update. And then it's also going to start um, and basically, if it detects a change to gateway, it will um, it will basically stop it and restart it again uh, to apply those those changes. And so then, if you run config Ethereum again, you can see that the gas price has been changed thirty five. For Ethereum, uh, will automatically fetch the gas price uh, from the node. Uh, other chains may not have that capacity. That's kind of why this manual gas price is used. Um, and then for gas limit transaction, because um, the gateway uses a different uh, number to estimate uh, what the gas is. So th there's a gas limit estimate, which is set at the DEX level. And then there's a gas limit transaction, which is kind of a blanket uh, gas limit that it uses for every transaction to try to make sure that the transaction actually goes through. So this means that you do need a certain minimum balance of native tokens in your wallet to pay for gas. Um, and so, so yeah, if you, if you run into gas, basically if you run into lots of um, kind of like transaction issues, look at your gas settings. Um, this question, which is what exactly does a manual gas price do? Does that mean that every gas transaction use, Ethereum transaction you submit uses 33 way regardless of uh, network business? This is a great question. So uh, no, it doesn't actually. And the reason is because uh, the, on Ethereum mainnet, on Ethereum mainnet, um, it uses the gas estimate from a node to determine uh, what the gas is. So it's basically a more intelligent gas way of doing that. However, um, not all chains have that capacity. So, it, so basically this depends on the network because just because Ethereum has something doesn't mean all the other chains that all also even compatible have it. And so, um, for instance, uh, Arbitrum, I think um, they, they don't have a concept of gas. So they kind of like basically assume that every transaction has 0.1 gas. However, Polygon, on Polygon, you actually do need to change the gas. So uh, one thing we had to do recently was uh, we updated the, the gas uh, from Polygon. I think before it was like 100. We made this 400 now because um, uh, Polygon, I think, has, uh, if you look at like Polygon gas his history, uh, it's actually gone up quite a lot, I believe. When we first set this, you know, it was like 100, it was like around here. But in the last few few months, it's now above like 300. So, so that's kind of why we set this to 400 now. But in the past few months, before we made this change, we had a lot of people who were trying to run Polygon bots out of the box and having gas related issues. I wish we could cover all the chains out there. It's just, uh, there's just so many networks. So we, we really try to optimize more for Ethereum uh, than for anything else. The third most important thing from setup is, node, is a node provider. So uh, by default, we use Anchor uh, because Anchor, uh, they have broad coverage across different chains and they offer public endpoints that don't require you to have a dedicated API key. However, uh, we have found that people have had lots of issues you know, with like speed. And so if you uh, use Alchemy or Infura, uh, you, do, you will likely see a, 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 speed, um, a speed difference. So um, for instance, I, I'm actually gonna use my Alchemy key uh, for, 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 for Arbitrum uh, because I think that it might be a bit faster. Uh, so let me, let me show you how to um, add that. And so basically the, what you wanna change is this node URL here. So by default, uh, it's the this um, this public anchor Arbitrum node, uh, which works, but because it's a public node, uh, it may be unreliable at times. And so uh, you can basically, if you have a separate node like my Alchemy node here, you can just kind of do this, uh, and then and then this will again uh, stop and restart Gateway. Uh, and after Gateway is online again, 
then you can basically see that uh, now it's using um, this alchemy node instead. Before you run a strategy, um, you, you should also understand the concept of tokens and how to work with tokens uh, within, within Hummingbot and also with a Hummingbot. So token lists are what blockchains use to map uh, a list of addresses, all the addresses to what a token is. Because anyone can create a token, you may have duplicates. Uh, so you'll, you'll often see kind of like, you know, there's lots of tokens with the symbol USCC uh, because, you know, there's lots of co clones out there, but there's only one canonical example of USCC on every network. And so it's really important to make sure that you're trading like the right, the right, you know, uh, address and not some fake scam token out there. So we used to use a URL for this. We used to kind of like refer to URLs, but we found that uh, because of network, you know, it, we added uh, like a network dependency. So now what we do is we add a default token list file for every network, and then you can modify that file. This conf folder, if you did the copy command correctly, you should see a lists um, folder here where it has different lists for every chain. Um, and this has already been mapped in Hunga where it says, slash home dash gateway slash conf file list. This location is the same one that you have here. So if you add a token, let's say to the Arbitrum token list, uh, let's say you have your own token, you can just kind of like copy this, add a new object here in this file. Uh, and then you, when you, if you exit Hummingbot, Docker Compose down, Docker Compose up again, then you can access those new tokens in that new list. You also may have to uh, approve tokens because the way that currently Hummingbot works right now is that uh, in order to run a strategy or a script, it checks if you have those tokens approved. We do have a, a method for you to help you approve tokens, which is approve tokens. For instance, if I want approve tokens on Uniswap, you can just kind of do like this. I want to approve the, let's say, USCC. You send a transaction, and then it'll pull for that transaction. If you run a strategy and you see lots of you know, waiting for approval, you know, messages is likely because the tokens you're trying to trade are not yet approved. Finally, one other gotcha that people have had issues with is wrapping tokens. What you actually need to trade with is wrapped Ethereum. And, and that's because Ethereum itself is not an ERC-20 token. Uh, so even when you're trading on Uniswap or DEXs, they're, they're actually wrapping the Ethereum for you behind the scenes. With Hummingbot, you know, we, we try to not kind of like hide anything from the user before you can actually trade, uh, actually send, the, send that to the, to the contract, you have to wrap Ethereum. The easiest way to wrap is by just going into the Uniswap app and just selecting WETH from here and doing the wrap for MetaMask. One helpful command in, in Gateway is the connector tokens command, which shows you how to, um, what your balances are. So I'm gonna add WETH uh, as well as USCC. And now if I do this, it will report uh, I have uh, USCC and WEF. So uh, I actually have a lot of ETH here. So I'm actually going to try to wrap a bit of ETH. Uh, let's say maybe 0 0.1 ETH. Normally, I would definitely recommend doing so on Arbitrum or Polygon uh, where gas is a lot cheaper. Um, so right now it's about 10 cents for this transaction. So now that we've you know learned how to configure uh, tokens and setting up uh, the, the connection, I think we're finally ready to run uh, the AMM ARB strategy. So before we do that, let me also add my KuCoin uh, credentials here. So now it's pulling my assets on, on KuCoin um, as well as on, on Uniswap. If you're wondering why zero here, uh, the reason is because my rate oracle source is set to Binance. Right now, I'm not in a region that's not you know available to Binance, uh, which is why it's not showing up. Uh, however, um, I can change that by changing the rate oracle source to CoinGecko or KuCoin. Um, you know, and, and if I do that, it should show up. Um, so, so apologies for the errors here. Uh, no, normally I run this on, under VPN or something like that to show uh, you know, what the experience is like for someone outside the US. Um, but, uh, but today, because um, uh, I have some technical issues with Discord, uh, I'm doing it uh, this way. So uh, I think we're actually ready to run our AMM ARP strategy. So let's set it up with these parameters here. Uh, so uh, I would use a create command to create a strategy uh, and then start the AMM ARB strategy. Uh, and then the first connector, I, will, I, I always like to pick the DEX as the first uh, connector uh, to make sure that you know the, the transaction executes there, 
before doing so on the centralized side. Uh, and so, um, yes, I will just use this uh, as the trading pair. And then the second one, I'll use KuCoin. ETH USDT, 01 to start off with, uh, and then I'll just use 1% profitability. Okay. After you kind of like set the initial configuration, you can run config to see the, the actual strategy configuration commands. So these are the ones that you set. Hit start. So the first thing it's going to do is going to, it's going to kind of like look at what we need to do is configure the rate oracle source. So I'm actually going to use KuCoin for this. Okay. Now it's actually using KuCoin as a rate oracle. So now it can, it can get this quote rate, calculate the arbitrage. Uh, so right now there's no arbitrage opportunity as there normally isn't. You know, why is that? Because you know, if it were, you know, making money would be very easy. You know, but but uh, you know, the, the reality is that for, for larger pairs like WEF USCC, these are not going to be easy ones to do uh, unless you're doing so on kind of like very, you know, like long tail networks or uh, between like a very small, small centralized exchanges. This type of arbitrage trade is about kind of like finding the right corridors, uh, which, you know, might be between different token pairs, uh, between different exchanges or between um, different chains. So, um, so uh, one thing you can play around with this, if you want to kind of get it to work is set the min profitability a lot lower. Let's try setting that to negative five to trigger some actual trades. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's see. In the meantime, uh, there's also a question from uh, Bluefish. For the AMM ARP strategy to work, does both the AMM and the SEX need to have the exact trading pair available? Or uh, in case the pair is missing from the DEX, is a strategy able to route the trade um, through several trading pairs, like the Uniswap interface does behind the scenes? Great question. Uh, no, you actually do need to have uh, ahead of time. So I'm actually gonna stop this bot. Let me actually address the, what, what actually happened here in the bot first and I'll, I'll answer the question. Just now uh, we set the min profitability to negative five. If you recall both the arbitrage uh, profit level on both legs was negative one, 1 1.5. And so what that means is that both legs, both the buy sell, you know, uh, buy on Uniswap, sell on KuCoin, as well as the selling Uniswap, buying KuCoin like started to execute. I would actually recommend doing this kind of test with a small amount of real capital, just to make sure that uh, you can actually successfully execute these transactions, you know, through your connection um, properly. Because a lot of the work in getting DEX boss to run properly is really, can I actually execute this transaction on this chain, you know, when I expect it to do so. Uh, in terms of the history, let's see, three trades on KuCoin, two trades on Uniswap. I think it's because I stopped it like right as it was doing something. We, we lost a bit of money here because of, of gas. Um, I think this is kind of like, you know, the complexity of getting Trinash to work on the deck. So now let me take Bluefish's question. Basically what Bluefish is asking is, when you're doing this, do, we, do you need to have the same trading pair available or, or not? The answer is no, because whatever trading pair you give it, it will actually try to uh, do the trade. Now, from the DEX perspective, it does try to route the trade. However, uh, that routing is uh, likely a, a reason why the Uniswap connector is, is slow right now. There's, uh, there's a bounty open for someone to convert the, the Uniswap side so that it, it gives you the option of just you know, getting the price for that one uh, route without kind of routing through all the different pools. And, and, and I think we'll actually significantly improve the speed on the, on the Uniswap side. We're only gonna trade what you tell us to trade. Uh, so the, uh, these symbols you put here are the ones that uh, basically define the market that we look for and we try to trade on. The, the routing side, um, I think we'll keep the routing option in for Uniswap. We believe that users likely will not want to use the router on Uniswap if they're trying to do arbitrage because um, the latency is gonna make arbitrage harder. In terms of the translation between different tokens, this is really where the rate oracle comes in. So the rate oracle, the, what it's doing is, is using um, the, the price source, whether it's CoinGecko or, or Exchange, to make the conversion between WETH and F uh, and between USCT and, and USCC. I would create a bounty for someone to kind of like define a fixed rate conversion. I hope that answers the question, but overall, I, I think a lot of the art in doing sex sex arbitrage 
is in kind of like identifying basically correlations between tokens of different, you know, ones that maybe one's a stable coin, some weird stable coin, uh, and arbitraging that one weird stable coin versus like USCT on some, some like small central exchange and just picking up like, you know, um, you know, 10, five, ten dollars of arbitrage every, every day, you know, that, that's kind of what I would look for in terms of opportunity, because I, I think, I suspect there's many arbitrage opportunities like this. They're just t too small for a, a quant trading firm to invest your time into. Because if you think about what it takes to actually capitalize on arbitrage, you, you basically have to have to have assets, you know, somewhere uh, or be able to borrow them uh, in order to actually capture that arbitrage when the opportunity arises. One last thing, I, I know this is a very long demo, but I wanna make sure people really understand how to use Gateway. What I just showed today was just the, the happy case. Things work as expected. That only happens like 20% of the time, honestly. You know, most of the time, you know, even when I was doing this demo last night, there's the problem with Arbitrum. I couldn't get transactions confirmed for some reason. And I did lots of debugging. I still don't know what happened. It's working this morning. I suspect it was actually something to do with the chain. Uh, but uh, anyway, so, so overall, I strongly recommend that if you're gonna kind of use a uh, gateway like this, you also use in conjunction with Postman. So Postman allows you to interact with Gateway uh, independently uh, and not just use uh, Hummingbot for it because then you can see debug if it's an issue with the Hummingbot side or with the, the Gateway side. So uh, let me show you how to set up Postman. Postman looks like this. Uh, you can It's an application that you download. We have a collection called Gateway API. Uh, this collection is in the Gateway repo. So if you, um, if you install Postman, and you import the collection and the environment that we have, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll kind of like see, um, you, you can start using basically the, the APIs right off the bat. In terms of setup, there's this certificates area. This corresponds to um, these certificates that you have in the uh, certs folder here. In the Hangout files folder, uh, th th this is a folder where uh, you know, your, your scripts, uh, your strategies, everything are saved. So for example, the strategy we just created, uh, the MMR1 uh, strategy file is located in the strategies folder. There is also the certs folder here. The source folder has the files that you need to plug into Postman. I added this cacert.pen file, which is from here. Um, and then I also added client certificates. So I said uh, the local host uh, 1588 is the port. And then I also added this, uh, this client cert PEM and the client uh, key uh, PEM and the passphrase that I, I used earlier from Gateway. So um, there are instructions on our docs on how to set this up properly. Uh, but uh, overall, I think if you've already kind of done this step, you've already you know, link your gateway and your Hummingbot, I would strongly recommend downloading Postman, you know, adding the certs, and that allows you to kind of like, just interact with it separately. So I've already done this earlier, so I can see, uh, you know, which networks I have, I can see what wallets I've added to, and I can also add and remove wallets directly. In here, uh, you can also check, you know, what allowances, for example, you have for a particular uh, chain. So overall, I, I highly recommend using Postman if you're going to be using Gateway uh, because it'll allow you to have a much more direct relationship and understand what the configuration you have to really do. So let's wrap up presentation for today. I did want to cover uh, one last section, what we're doing with Gateway going forward. Gateway is one component of our overall roadmap. The bulk of our roadmap is really focused on promoting the overall ecosystem for Hummingbot, uh, especially the dashboard, which we really think will be the control center for Hummingbot. Uh, but there are a few gateway items on the roadmap. Three in particular, we wanna really improve the first time um, user experience. So for example, um, you know, getting the status of gateway, uh, you know, getting the balances, you know, um, you know right, which is right now kind of like, kind of uh, not, not very uh, good. Um, figure out the approval status uh, of a token and also doing utility functions like wrapping uh, a token. That'll make lives a lot easier 
for people who are trying to use Gateway. The second thing we're going to do is we're really going to try to improve the AMM ARB strategy. There's already been a couple of bounties that are created for that. We have seen people have success with AMM ARB once they've had set, set up correctly, giving that strategy more options, improving the Uniswap connector in particular. And then finally, the third one is we're going to try to really improve the Uniswap uh, V3 LP strategy, kind of allow people to kind of programmatically manage their LP positions on, on various decks. Because Gateway, it's hard for us to devote all of our energy to it, but we do recognize it's an important strategic element of where the market is going. So we want to try to make sure that we can add support for that. Really make this a bounties driven process happening right now. So we've already assigned uh, one bounty to, to really speed up the Uniswap connector by, remove, by adding the non-router option. There's someone working on the balancer uh, connector right now, as well as a connector to the Ripple DEX and the Ripple chain. We also have some open and proposed connectors. Uh, uh, so there's a curve bounty that uh, was created last year that we're still open, uh, that we have, um, that, that I think people, some, some people were looking for a developer to take up. Team that's interested in, in building um, and upgrading the Pancake V3 connector. So that's been a pretty common request from the community. So we'll probably help them get an HIP created for that one. And finally, um, I believe Coin Alpha is going to submit a improvement to the Trader Joe connector pretty soon uh, because they're working with Trader Joe on D minor campaigns. So uh, yeah, thanks for uh, sticking with this one. I, I really wanted to just you know create a, a demo that shows people how, the, how to use the current state of Gateway. Uh, I know it's not you know as user friendly as uh, we all like it to be. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, I think it's better than it was. And I think that with you know, the help of everyone from the community um, and our bounty system, I think we can definitely improve uh, you know, and, and make it work for, for everyone uh, in the coming months. Uh, finally, um, we are going to start a new cohort of BotCamp in about two weeks. We're gonna add a new module that's focused on creating DEX strategies in particular. So um, if you're interested, in signing up, please, um, yeah, like uh, I think this is botcamp.homingbot.org. Uh, and um, yeah, let us know uh, on Discord if you have any questions about how Botcamp works. Yeah, Memento asks, um, not related, but any comments on the SEC? Having kind of gone through our own issues with the SEC a few years ago, uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, uh, you know, Google the, uh, the, the Hummingbot origin story blog post. Uh, having gone through that, um, I, th I think we at Hummingbot have maybe maybe been lucky, but I think we've kind of tried to purposely design our whole um, our whole project so that we're just building open source software, and and the reason is because um, at least for now, uh, software you know especially open source trading tools are, are just not a regulated uh, aspect uh, of the system. You know, however, what we learned is that if you try to create um, you know something that looks like an exchange. Uh, a fund, uh, a bank, basically anything that is taking people's money and storing it. Then, then you got to like, you know, register with SEC or you got to like leave the US, you got to do all kinds of like really complicated things. That whole experience is kind of why uh, we are just creating open source software and trying to create a nonprofit organization out of just getting people to just use their software. It's hard, but from a legal standpoint, it just makes things a lot easier because taking custody of funds uh, and then creating regulated entities like banks and exchanges, you know, even if you're doing so with code, um, it, it, it puts you in a, in a, just in a more complicated position as a founder uh, and as, a, as, a, as an organization. And so um, overall, I would say, you know, for us, like I, I'm really happy that it's almost like we don't have to worry about that because we can just create software, create education and, and, and make that a sustainable venture for ourselves and for our community. And how people use our tools, how people use the, the, the open source stuff we create, it's up to them, you know? And we, we want everyone to respect and follow the laws of their local jurisdiction, but it's not up to us, uh, it's up to the users. So, all right, thanks everyone for uh, all your time today. Uh, I'll be back in another couple of weeks with a community call. We have a demo of a new potential uh, community connector uh, from the community team on, I think, Kajira. Uh, which is the Cosmos Dex connector. See you next time. Feel free to reach out on Discord and, and everywhere else. Bye, everyone.